Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, month has been declared as the month of mental health awareness in the U.S. as well as in several other countries, and lots of people are joining to speak up. Particularly here in Nigeria, we understand the importance of mental and emotional health with the rise of suicide and depression here. We see the need for people to speak some more and get help where necessary. Today, our topic is emotional stability. I'll be joined by the emotions doctor. Her name is Oyinko Sola Alabi. She is popularly known as the emotions doctor. She's a licensed therapist, a certified life coach, an emotional intelligence practitioner, and the founder of Emotions City, an um, academy, an emotional quotient academy for professionals. She serves humanity by helping emotionally flustered adults gain emotional stability, and she has done this impeccably over the years. Thank you for joining us. So you can call My pleasure being here. I am very excited that you're here because I feel like there's so much to talk about. Okay. Just today on social media, there's been several pockets of sad news happening yeah. in different areas. First yeah. of all, we heard the story of the young boy. He almost committed suicide because yeah. he he failed jam. Yes. Then there was a story of a young poet yeah. who committed suicide. Old. Exactly. Yes. Who committed suicide as well. And we're seeing lots of people swinging deeper and deeper into depression. Statistics mm. say that in the nearest future, depression will be, become the second highest killer in the world. Yes. What, first of all, are your thoughts as to why depression is on the rise in Nigeria? Let's bring it home. Okay. Um, usually when we talk about depression, I'm usually um, a little reserved in the sense that when we mention the word depression, I see that we throw it around in Nigeria. But depression usually comes after a diagnosis. You know, so there's the being overwhelmed by life, which I think that a lot of people, you know, are getting to. And then there's the mild or chronic depression. But usually when you get to that state, that means that there is like a psychologist or the professionals who have diagnosed you to get there. But now let's talk about being overwhelmed by life. You know, Nigeria is a handful. You know, for you to live in Nigeria, you must practically have about 10 lives. Um, Nigeria is, Nigeria is just a place where you honestly need to have some internal power before the external because if you are waiting to be extrinsically motivated then you may never be so let's look at um, an average human being spending their lives in Nigeria you have so many battles from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed you know and then these battles um, are from your mental state to emotional state and then the financial side of it is there and one thing that I see so well is, let me talk about the contribution of social media, for example, to depression. Now, social media is a double-edged sword. You know, some people are making money, um, clicking deals and all of the funniest things. But the other part of social media is that, for example, Instagram. Instagram has proven to be the greatest brew of jealousy and envy, where people Photoshop their imperfect lives to give a state of perfection. And then your followers are being tensioned unconsciously, then they begin to see you and think that, okay, so what exactly is wrong with my life? So two days ago, I put up an article called There's No Such Thing as Age Mate. That singular word has caused a lot of trouble in the country. You know, where society sees you and says to you, for example, your mates are married, you are not married. Your mates have given birth, you have not given birth. Your mates have been promoted. I mean, the word your mate, your mate, your mate makes it look like you are not existing. You are not living. So at every point in time, I think a handful of people are getting to that state where they are not appreciating their lives anymore. So every time they think about themselves, it's in comparison to somebody else. They're not looking at their own yes. race. You know, you know, there's so something every to time people against. think about their achievement, it's in comparison to somebody else. Every time they think they've succeeded, they're comparing with somebody so else. So we hear all the time, a lot of all the social media pages and the motivational pages are telling you, run your own race, the gra grass is greener where you wet it. Mm. You know, there are all these posts that That's tell you not to compare later. your life. That's coming later. Because so how do we now deal with... You know, that comparison drama, that thing that makes you want to compare your life yeah. with someone else. Mm. How do you nip it in the bottle? How do you deal with it the moment you start to realize mm. that you're comparing your life? Okay, so there's a particular strategy that I use. And then the strategy is I've come to a point where I've told myself that there will always be somebody richer than you. There will always be somebody who is supposedly more successful than you. There will always be somebody who is more famous than you. So now contentment is key. Contentment in the sense that while you strive towards your dream, you should be content on your journey. So live daily. So 
knowing fully well that I'm not in a race with anybody. I'm in a race with myself. So my duty every day is to be 1% better than I was yesterday. So one thing I do on social media, for example, is called social media fumigation. Everybody that I follow that has the capacity to tension me, I unfollow you. It's not about you, it's about me. So when I see that every time you post something, it makes me, it's like a trigger for me, an emotional trigger. It just makes me think, oh, okay, you're not doing anything. You're not doing enough. Now there are two sides. There are the empowering ones where you see some pictures and you strive to be better. But there are some where you see them and you already know that, okay, if I continue to see this particular person, it may cost me, it may just disturb me. So that's not a terrible thing to do Oh, no, such. it's not a terrible thing. You have your data, you have your phone. Unfollow them, it's okay. You're not supposed to follow everybody. So if you have anybody who is tensioning you, it's not to go and tell them that you're tensioning me or that's why I No. It's for your personal peace because your peace is your responsibility. Every time you go online and then it makes you feel like you are underachieving or you are not successful or it makes you feel like you are not good enough. Now there's something about failure also. I see that to some extent some people who have committed suicide rated themselves failures to some extent. So if they didn't pass jump, if they didn't do this one, if they didn't do that one, um, marriage is failing. I usually say something. Failure is feedback. There's nothing as failure, actually. Failure is feedback. It's telling you that, oh, you didn't do something right. Do it better. Somebody was saying to me that, oh, because my marriage failed, I'm a failure. I said, no, you failed at a marriage does not mean you are a failure. So failure is an event, not a person. So the moment you can separate that I did not do well in an exam, I didn't get a promotion, I didn't do this. You see it as an event. And then you challenge yourself to do better. All of us have failed before. True. Yes. If you are in Nigeria, you fail daily, quite So truthfully. failure is feedback. It's something that yes, should happen. Yes, and failure is an event, not a person. All right. Now let's talk about the journey to self-awareness. A lot oh. of the time they talk about self-awareness, getting to know yourself. Yeah. But self, the, word th uh, the phrase self-awareness is thrown around a lot. Mm. What exactly does self-awareness mean and how do you get to that journey of discovering yourself? Okay, fantastic. Self-awareness is a combination of two words, self and aware. And then the key word is know thyself. How do you know yourself? Two, two, um, through two principles. The first one is ability to enhance your emotional literacy. So Google is there, YouTube is there. Go ahead and do as many self-assessment tests as possible. There are some um, websites I can recommend. Just do a personality test there. And then after that, the crux of know yourself is have a meeting with yourself. Like I have um, a way of saying that the greatest meeting you will ever have in life is a meeting with yourself. So sit down, even if it's 20 minutes a day, while you're driving, while you're in the bus, ask yourself questions. The essence of the questions would be, number one, what do I want to do in life? Who do I want to become? Who exactly am I? Now, who you are must be in congruence with your soul. Because you are not a body with a soul, you are a soul with a body. So you do not have a soul, you are a soul. So identifying those things, and as much as possible, you can get professional help to help you even crystallize all of that. The second thing is meditation is fantastic. Be still. Now, I see that a whole lot of us have something I call dissonance, internal dissonance, where you are sitting down somewhere, but your body is somewhere, your mind is not there. You know how we show up at events, and then you are cooking jollof rice right in your heart, and then people are seeing you, but you are not even there. And because we are so distracted, there's a tendency, and that's why when people commit suicide, to some extent, it's a surprise to us. Because they look like the happiest people. We didn't notice people. them, like the poet. I mean, yes. he had over 3,000 followers. People were now saying, oh, this was what he meant. He posted oh, on this the 12th, he, he posted on the I mean, 13th. the guy kept on posting, this was what he meant, this was what he meant, and that's usually what it is. People then find out after people have committed suicide. You know, so if we pay attention to ourselves, because the reason why we actually miss a lot of things, a lot of emotional keys from other people is because we even miss from ourselves. We don't even know how we move from happiness to unhappiness. We don't know how we transit from joy in one minute to anger in another minute. We don't know how we move from joy to sadness at the same time or from joy to disgust. I mean, we don't have an idea of the um, will of emotions at all and how we transit. And if we cannot do that internally, how then do we pay attention to other people? And you can't blame Nigerians. The first thing is that all of us are on survival race. At least let me eat, let me feed. Because it's after survival you can now face significance. Now let's talk about two emotions that are very strong in Nigeria. As much okay. as we say we are happy people. Is anger there. Anger <laughs> and sadness. <laughs> Anger Uncle because Anger. people are trying to attack you, there's road mm. rage, you know, you are working with people, you don't know how to um, structure <laughs> your emotions. How do you deal with anger mm. and how do you deal with sadness as a Nigerian? Okay, fantastic. One key tool for dealing with anger is what I call the pause, the six seconds pause actually. So all you need to get a better um, control over your emotions because at every point in time between the stimuli and the response you have six seconds. So between a trigger and your response to that trigger, you have six seconds to buy in. The six seconds is supposed to help you reduce flood. 
So one tool I'm going to give right now is called six seconds pause or delayed response. What that means is that the moment you see anything that has the capacity to alter your state, which is a trigger or an interference, do not reply immediately. At least count to six before you do that. In between counting to six, you are buying time. So somebody does something. You know, every time from bike to tricycle to other vehicles, every time we just face the trigger. Human beings. Before you open your mouth, count to six. The essence of counting to six is to be sure that you are going to think before you speak. Okay. You are going to be in control before you utter that word. You are going to do at least think before you open your mouth. Because at this point in time, you and I had better reduce our risk of regret over and over again. So six seconds pause or delayed response is a fantastic tool at controlling. And that, that is one thing we have to take away from this conversation. Six second pause or and the delayed, delayed response. response yeah. So you think you process it, process yes. your response. At least count to six before you open your fantastic mouth. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining My us pleasure on the being show. Here. We know that we have the Emotional Intelligence Week yes. coming up. Um, when is it? 5th to 7th of June is totally free. Brilliant. So Emotional Intelligence Week, 5th to 7th of June. Let's continually try to discover ourselves and find out all that we need to know about ourselves have a meeting with yourself and yeah. get to understand who you are what triggers you and how you can better yourself for people who want to follow up with the work that you do how can they do that please follow me on at emotions doctor emotions and doctor just one word on instagram you can send me a dm or anything and i'll be right there to serve you and as for the websites you said you would give to us to go and check our yes emotional... www.1616personalities.com is okay. the most accurate uh, i think personality i've done that as yes, well Fantastic. I mean, over 20 million have done the personality test. www.1616personalities.com right. and it's free. Brilliant. So let's all go there, get to check out ourselves yeah. and you know, find out what triggers us. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.